Scouting shallow marshes can produce a great box of fish, but it comes with some risk. How you run through a new area can make a big difference. All right, there's Mussolini and Magnolia right there by Bayou St. Malo, right off of Bayou La Lucha, right out of Holdale on the Breton San Marino. Now, we fish Magnolia a lot, and we're heading up to the north end of it. Actually, I guess it's the east end, northeast end. But I want you to see something. I know I'm in plenty depth right now, but what I've done is I've taken my engine, I have a jack plate, I've lowered it all the way down, and I've trimmed all the way down, and I'm running at 3,300 RPM. Now what that does is that sets the boat down at a pretty deep depth. You can see behind me. My wake's clear, meaning I have plenty of water. But if I didn't know this area, if I was scouting an area for the new first time, a new place looking for some fish, saying, man, on the map it looks good, but I've never been there. It's a good technique to let that boat sit as deep as you can let it sit. Let it grind down in. That way, as soon as you start bumping on mud, you know you've got at least an opportunity to get the boat off of it. You don't want to push it too far. Something like this. Now we're going to pass in a minute, right past a little mud flat, that if the water was eight inches higher, you wouldn't know it existed. I mean, you can see it right here. And that little mud flat could shut you down. But if at least if you have the boat as deep as you can sit it, this is as deep as I can get this boat to grind and still be on a plane and head up to the north side of the, uh, of the, of the lagoon, then you have an opportunity, if you do hit bottom, to get yourself out. All right, we're looking at, it's about 4.30. Took our time to get up in here. Water's clean, it's beautiful. For as much wind as we've been experiencing, this water's fantastic. So what I've chosen is a mullet color, a silver side, black top, on a front-bladed jig. A front-bladed jig has a lot of different names, but chatterbait, uh, strike king, uh, I think, I think a booyah, I did a bunch of them out there, basically just has the little blade attached to the jig head. And I like it for a lot of reasons, and we'll talk more about it later in the show. But what we're gonna do is, we're gonna start on here. Points and pockets, you see little indents. Little opportunities like that. Now, with this tide going down, that water's gonna be coming out of there. I don't see any strong currents, but we're just gonna start working along in here. I've seen a couple of reds feeding and pushing and moving along. We'll see if they're hungry. So come on, work with me, and we'll just start easing off down there. If you get your rod and reel, make a few casts. If you catch something, let me know. Finding a little grass in here, that's a good thing. It can be frustrating because it'll clog up your baits, but the fact is, the redfish love working through that grass. It's just that much more, that much more cover that they have to ambush their bait. Now that water's gorgeous. In fact, the water may be too clear. They may be able to see me before I can see them. That water's so clean. Um, and I'm, like I said, I'm working this front bladed jig and I'm finding good weeds. A lot of grass in here, and that's a good thing. But it makes it tough to work a front bladed jig. You gotta kind of rip it, you gotta constantly rip it through the water to get rid of the to get rid of the weeds. If that continues, if the weeds stay thick, I'm gonna shift over to a spoon or something weedless. Like a spoon. I can rig a jig uh, to be weedless. Yeah, you see a little stuff, but uh, I can rig a jig to be weedless, or I can throw a gold spoon. I don't think either one matters. A, a spoon allows you to cover more territory quicker. A redfish will hit a spoon as you kind of rip it through the water because it's flashing, whereas a jig just kind of zips through. A jig is more effective when you can kind of work it slowly. All right, there he is. All right, I got to come right behind here. Keep going for that shoreline, you little shit. He's right up in that pocket. Saw a little bit of a saw a little bit of a wake up in this pocket, and sure enough, made the cast, gave him the opportunity to find us, bounce that bait around, and look at that—a beautiful, beautiful, perfect, eaten size red. Now he's not going to be a big tournament red, but if you're looking for food value, that 
is about as good as it gets. Clean, shallow water. Letting the wind kind of work with us. Got up into a little pocket, saw him move. Put the bait in front of him. Let it sit for a minute and gave him an opportunity, gave him the opportunity to find it. That is a beautiful little guy. And normally, we'd make a dinner out of him. Tonight, it's your lucky day, big man. Go grow. Be a tournament red for me. Stay back here and be a big fat tournament red for me next year, will you? All right, brother. Let's see here. I'm going to put him right where you can watch him. Hey, don't, you want to give him a little kiss, bud? Give him a little kiss. Beep. Good for you. All right, big man. Go become a big redfish. Boop. Disappear. All right. So far, the scouting seems to be paying off. Everything that we've expected to see, we have. Not seeing the little trinosis draining as much as I'd like. I think the water has to get a little lower. We only have about, a, about an hour and a half of daylight, but we'll keep working through here, and hopefully we'll get some of those conditions in well, as well. Until then, we'll keep looking in the points and pockets for any sort of indication of fish moving around. We've got one redfish, great conditions, and a beagle who can't control his excitement. I think we'll see a few fish right after this Louisiana wildlife break. Serious anglers now have ammunition for coastal fishing. Look at that. The Norton Brass Rattler casts like a bullet, rattles up fish, and works like magic. Between the steel rattle and the brass bullet and the salt water, that it creates something similar to static electricity, and, and, and the fish believe it's alive. The Norton Brass Rattler and other great Norton fishing products can be found at many sporting goods stores and online at NortonBrassRattler.com. It's year-end model clearance time at Ray Brand Dodge Chrysler Jeep on the West Bank. Get the 07 Dodge Nitro for only $18.9 financed through Chrysler. Or get the 07 Chrysler PT Cruiser for only $12.9, several to choose from. Or get the 07 Ram Mega Cab 4x4 Diesel for only $36.5. Or 40% off MSRP on our entire stock of Ram regular cabs. And all new vehicles come with a lifetime powertrain warranty. Only at Ray Brand Dodge Chrysler Jeep, 1660 West Bank Expressway in Harvey. For over 22 years, Louisiana Sportsman Magazine has provided hunters and fishermen with the information they need to make the most of Louisiana's incredible outdoors. Each issue is packed with hunting and fishing, with how-to and where-to stories from local experts. You can order a year of Louisiana Sportsman today for only $19.95 and save 40%. Call 1-800-538-4355 between 8 a.m. and 5 p.m. or subscribe online at www.louisianasportsman.com today and get your limit tomorrow. Hi, I'm C.T. Williams of the Louisiana Charter Boat Association. You know, Louisiana's got some great fishing and some great fishing captains. From Lake Charles to Lake Pontchartrain, make sure that your next charter trip is with a captain who's a member of the Louisiana Charter Boat Association. An LCBA captain is a professional, serious about his business and his fishing, and that means you're likely to catch more fish and have more fun on the water. Ask your captain if he's an LCBA member or go to the Louisiana Charter Boat Association website. 